We've seen a tremendous amount of quake swarms around Yellowstone, Montana, south towards Utah, and today we saw a very strange coincidence of a 5.6 magnitude quake that was downsized immediately by USGS to a 4.5, even though some knowledgeable people claim it should be at least a 4.7, 4.8. But what I wanted to say was that it happened the same time as a 3.3 magnitude happened at Yellowstone. Now, if this is true, that the Yellowstone supervolcano is two and a half times larger than previously thought, that means it takes up basically most of the middle of the continental United States, up to the middle of it. And that's astonishing, which means that it also encompasses uh, North Alberta, where we had a 4.6 just a few hours ago, and that's, they, they said that that was from fracking, but uh, we also, that also encompasses the Colorado volcanoes. So this is very, very, uh, even, even though this is from um, uh, in Habitat, I'll even leave below for you, it's not a new article. It's, uh, I think it was, if I'm correct, from 2013. I can't seem to find the date all of a sudden. But um, what's happening is that um, uh, this is astonishing. Utah team is expected to present their findings at the American Geophysical Union in San Francisco, where they will outline how, if the volcano ever erupts, the result would be catastrophic, not only for the United States, but for the whole world. They were speaking to BBC News. It was Professor Bob Smith, and he said, we've always thought it would be bigger, but this finding is astounding. The team mapped the magma chamber using a network of seismometers that were situated around the park. Dr. Jamie Farrell from the University of Utah said, we record earthquakes in and around Yellowstone and we measure the seismic waves as they travel through the ground. The waves travel slower through hot and partially molten material. With this, we can measure what's beneath. The last major eruption was, as we said, the major one, 640,000 years ago, and a smaller one, 70,000. Now, we know that uh, Yellowstone National Park, the supervolcano, lies on top of the massive supervolcano, having the potential to unleash this planet-altering destruction with its eruption. But a team of researchers from Utah discovered that the volcano's magma chamber is about two and a half times bigger than earlier believed, and it's estimated to be over 55 miles in length, that we're talking about the magma chamber containing over anything between 200 to 600 cubic kilometers of molten rock. The uh, team, as we said, mapped the magma chamber using seismometers around the park. The last major eruption occurred 640,000 years ago, a minor one 70,000 years ago, and that major one, the last one, sent ash across the whole of North America, affecting even the planet's climate. But it's unclear when the Yellowstone supervolcano will erupt again. Scientists think that we are overdue for another eruption. And they, think, they think we're overdue by a good 60,000 years. He says, uh, they said that you can only use the time between eruptions to work out the frequency. So in a sense, you only have two numbers to get to that 700,000 year figure. This is what Smith explained. Now, the new evidence suggests the massive magma plume under Yellowstone Park. The study reveals evidence of the massive plume of magma, and it could run all the way. Are you ready? I hope you're sitting down. The magma plume could run all the way down to Mexico. Scientists debate the presence of a plume for years, and if one does exist, it would explain the heat that bubbles to the surface in the park. But it wouldn't only explain that. It means that uh, we now have, obviously, an explanation of, for example, why we had the big 
quake in Colorado, the 5.3 that was downgraded to 4.5. And at the same time, like five minutes later, we have the 3.3 in Yellowstone. That's beside the swarms we had in Colorado. Colorado had a swarm. And besides the fact that we've had, along the fault lines, various weird earthquakes uh, at the southwest part of Utah, again, on fracture zones, on, on fault lines, leading from Yellowstone down southwest, but we also had Montana quake swarms that are northwest, north and northwest of Yellowstone. And we even had that huge one of a 4.6 in Alberta. They claim it was from fracking, but who knows? As we said, and you'll see in the video before this one with the Alberta quake, that was on a uh, an area of mountains, of the Rocky Mountains, a line that passes right through Yellowstone. So, if they say that this goes all the way down to Mexico, you could imagine it's not just from Yellowstone goes down to Mexico, it also goes up that, the other way to Canada. Researchers at the University of Texas found evidence for a plume under the park using seismic data obtained from listening stations all across North America, these stations were run by EarthScope US Array. And the data from these found a long, thin, 72 by 55 kilometer channel where seismic waves are slower. So this uh, area where seismic waves are slower indicates that this section of the mantle is 600 to 800 degrees warmer than other areas around it which means that they found the warm magma plume. Now the plume could be the cause of Yellowstone's surface activity, even though the scientists say that more research has to be done for them to conclude what exactly is there. There's also more work to be done to understand the forces holding the plume in place in its current location. This article was from phys.org and um, the images are uh, via nature and deposit photos and uh, this is on in habitat i'll leave a link below for you so now we have an explanation of yes ben fiorulo i will send this to you i don't know if you know about this but uh, obviously it's extending all the way down to mexico which means that it takes in utah that had the quake swarms that we thought, well, that's weird. Why are we having quake swarms there? And why are we having quake swarms in Colorado? And Colorado has, yes, mud volcanoes and volcanoes. And they say it had a super volcano where the lake dried up. And that's where we have the Great Sand Dunes National Park, which is our sand from the lake, from this huge lake. I mean, I can imagine. I know I don't want to imagine, but you can imagine the condition of the early United States when all this was sort of had erupted and settled and was settling down, the ash, the water, I mean the, the volcanoes also spew out water so you can imagine how much bodies of water and lakes were, out, were there because of the water coming out from uh, being, being brought in from the oceans and being spouted out by geysers and volcanoes. Unbelievable. So yeah, it goes all the way down to Mexico and all the way up to Canada. This is fascinating. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. 
more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.